I've been creating Genshin Impact content for almost a year now. And over the course of that year, we've reached an amazing 20K milestone. I never thought that Tevachinary would grow that much in that span of time. So first and foremost, I just wanted to give you all a huge thank you very much. And thank you so much for enjoying the content that I put out. With that said, I've never shown off my favorite Genshin Impact characters before, other than maybe a few videos that I've done or a really obvious answer that I'm sure you all know. This list will consist of personal reasons why I love these characters, as well as of course the lore reasons, and even in some cases, some meta and gameplay factors. I'm not a whiz at gameplay, but I know enough to get by. Anywho though, with that said, let's start this list off at number 10. But first, why not head down to our community Discord server? We talk about everything Genshin, including lore and theories. So head down to the description if that's something you're interested in. I'm also going to be live right here on YouTube from here on out. Currently, I am replaying through Tevat, researching again. So if that sounds fun to you and you want to interact with me and the community, I will be live Monday, Wednesday, and Friday at 5 p.m. PST. But enough of that though. Let's open the Tevachinary and see what's been uncovered. Starting off this list is an odd one, but a very mysterious and interesting one. Number 10 is Alice. And if you guys have been watching my content for a while, then Alice should have been a little obvious. With Alice, we really don't know a lot about her other than she's a famous adventurer, she's an oddball of her experiments, she's a near omnipotent sorceress, she's an alchemist, she's the author of the Tevat Travel Guide, and the most important detail is of course the fact that she's the mother of Klee. Alice is one of those characters that just kind of chills and watches things from afar. She apparently can travel to other worlds, seeing as Barbara has got that all-powerful idol magazine. She's even smart enough to set up the Golden Apple Archipelago. God knows how much time in advance that she anticipated her daughter and the rest of the Mondstadt crew to show up. I'll say it as always, I want to know more about Alice. Up next is our first Liyue character, or should I say characters actually. I couldn't decide on a single character for this slot because I like them both equally. Ningguang and Beidou are taking the next slot at number 9. Beidou and Ningguang practically work hand in hand. Beidou can kind of just do whatever she wishes and Ningguang will pardon it. Ningguang is the Tianchuan of the Liyue Qixing and owns probably the biggest floating palace in Tevat, the Jade Chamber, which she nuked the Osile family with and we had to rebuild it again. But I mean, with that breathtaking view, how could you not want to rebuild it? Ning is also a super slick businesswoman and knows how to get what she wants. Beidou follows suit with this in a sense, as she can practically just sell the crux anywhere she wants. I mean, for Archon's sake, she snuck us into Inazuma when the Vision Hunt decree was going on. Beidou is also incredibly strong in her own right, with or without a vision, seeing as she slew the Leviathan, Haishan, without a vision. She literally gained her vision right after that fight. I have an entire video about Beidou that talks about her and her story if you guys want to go check that out. Ningguang is also a master of her own game of chess she created, and Beidou and her actually play together. Both of these characters are notable in their own right, and I'm glad they were able to make a spot on my list as one of my favorite Genshin Impact ships. And yes, I do ship them. They're probably my favorite. At number 8 is the second character on this list that's currently not playable, being Vanessa. Vanessa made her debut in the Genshin Impact manga, and we find out who she is as a character. Her, her little sister Linda, and various members of her tribe, the Marotten, are enslaved due to the cruel aristocrats of Mondstadt. This is during a time when Venti was passed out for a certain amount of time and really let Mondstadt go. Venti wakes up though and he sees what's going on. He then proceeds to meet Vanessa and Mondstadt during the Ludi Harpestum, where she is getting apples for her sister. Venti then witnesses the treatment that the Lawrence clan gives to Vanessa and proceeds to meet her later with her being in a cage. He then talks to her for a while while Nessa asks about Celestia. Venti is hesitant and brushes this question to the side. She then goes to defend her people by fighting against Ursa the Drake. With the help of Venti, Ursa is defeated, and Vanessa is deemed as a hero of Mondstadt, even being the Falcon of the Four Winds. 
Vanessa then later ascends to Celestia, and from there, we don't ever see Vanessa again. Vanessa overall seems like a genuinely great person who has a lot of love for her people. She's a true hero, and I hope we see her again someday. Though her appearance was short, I really like her and her personality. A character that I recently started to like as of only a few months ago is Eula. Eula, lore-wise, is amazing, especially because she was born as a Lawrence. The Lawrences, as we know, were the corrupt aristocrats of old Mondstadt. The citizens of Mondstadt are still bitter towards them because of what happened in the past. Eula actually faces backlash for being a Lawrence, and thus growing up was definitely different for her. She was practically raised with Amber by her grandfather. With that upbringing, Eula would grow up different with knowing the etiquette and mannerisms of the Lawrence clan, but despite this, she is still a really genuine and nice individual. Even with this upbringing, people of Mondstadt still treat her differently, even though Master Jean and a lot of the Knights of Favonius look up to her. She has a very soon dare kind of attitude, but she cares for her friends a lot, including Amber. They're practically sisters, and the relationship dynamic is actually really wholesome. As far as gameplay goes, Eula is actually one of my main DPS units I use alongside Raiden. Eula and Raiden kind of go hand in hand, especially with having constant electro damage. Superconduct finally gets useful with this duo. And to be honest, the main reason I use Eula was because I wanted to use Raiden as viably as I could. But regardless, Eula is also still a very nicely designed character. Wrapping up the first half of the list, we have two Archons, being Barbados and Morax. We obviously know them as Venti and Zhongli. To be honest, this is another one of those cases where I can't decide between the two. Both of these Archons are amazing in their own right. Venti has great comedic gags, especially with him being a drunk. And while Morax is just a very wise old man. Regardless of both of their personalities though, these two are the only original Archons that still stand. And with that, they both possess knowledge that the average individual wouldn't know. Both of these characters are hiding stuff from us, if that wasn't blatantly obvious. But with the information we do learn, being the art of erosion, the bits and pieces of Celestia, and not to mention the history of the two nations these two gods reign over, we learn both these Archons have seen their fair share of battles in their time. Venti and Zhang Li have both seen friends perish over the centuries as well, but they see it as it's just life in general. When it comes to Venti, despite his happy-go-lucky attitude, it seems like it's only a facade to a degree. When it comes to certain topics, he seems to back away from them. The same attitude is also seen by Zhang Li, where both of these Archons have seen some stuff in their day that they choose to keep living and put on a face. Both their personalities have really captured my love for them, and I hope they stay alive for a while longer. I see death flags on Venti, and I can't even explain it, but I'm sure you guys could. Starting the second half of the list is a character that not only do we meet within the first 10 minutes of gameplay, but as it turns out, I also share a birthday with her. Up at number 5 is Amber. Amber is obviously one of those characters that kind of gets ragged on, because she isn't exactly the greatest unit. But if you put that aside and you look at her lore-wise and design-wise, she's actually a really phenomenal character. Amber has got a personality like she wants to help everyone, no matter how big or small. In the very beginning, without barely knowing the Traveler, she already agrees to hang posters up of the Traveler's sibling, depending on if you chose Aether or Lumine. Prior to this though, we see figments of her personality in the Genshin Impact manga, where she helps out a character named Kole. Kole feels like there's no place in the world for her in regards to her prior circumstances. Amber makes her feel human, and she in a sense is like a big sister figure. She puts everything on the line to help her friends, and when we come back to Mondstadt, she's always one of the first people to greet us. I look forward to eating a meal with her at Good Hunter, especially with that sticky honey roast. Amber is too nice of a character to dislike, and if you were to talk to me last year, Amber probably wouldn't have made it on this list, let alone this high. Amber has grown on me a lot. I remember this like it was yesterday. Here's the gold, baby. Come on. Oh my god, I got her! I actually got her! No fucking way! You're fucking kidding me right now! What the fuck, dude? I 
fucking pulled her on my first one. Fuck. Yeah, at one point, Kutching was the character that I always wanted to pull for. During her banner, I kind of went a little crazy, and now I have C5 Kutching. So this isn't accidental, this is 100% purposeful. But yeah, Kutching, design-wise, was the character I wanted the most. Purple's my favorite color, Lightning is my favorite element in general, and I really loved her playstyle despite her not being one of the greatest characters. Kutching is a common 5 star that anyone can pull on when it comes to the standard banner. But to me, during that time, I didn't really understand how the meta worked. And I didn't really know that the Electro element was as bad as it was slash is. Superconduct just wasn't getting it, and Overload wasn't either. But I still ran Kutching because I didn't care. And you can realistically play Genshin any way you want. Lore-wise, I really like how she questions the world and Zhang Li himself. Zhang Li even respects her skepticism. Kaching seems like a free thinker in this world of predestined fates. During the most recent Lantern Rite, though, really made me appreciate Kaching more. We finally got to see Kaching slow down with her work, and we were able to enjoy some fireworks with her. She puts her life into her work, and sometimes it's good to settle down and just remember to celebrate from time to time, especially Kaching having such a huge role in ruling Liyue. Her Lantern Rite outfit is also really cute, and I think it suits her perfectly. Also forgot to mention during Ningguang's entry that her Lantern Rite apparel also looks nice. Ah yes, time for our bronze medal today. Now, originally I was going to put the number two spot here, but I ultimately changed my mind because number two is a bit more personal for me. At number three though, is a character that I use a lot to this day and is my main for the Spiral Abyss or anything meta related, I suppose. She's still a character that shreds even today, being Hu Tao. Silly churl, billy churl, silly billy hilly churl. Ooh. Isn't that song great? It's pretty good, especially when slaying a bunch of hilly churls. <laughs> oh, wait, I forgot that in my hilly churl video, I said I didn't do that anymore. No. Design-wise and lore-wise for Hu Tao, I gotta say I really like what they went for. Hu Tao is the 77th director for the Wang Shang Funeral Parlor, where she works with our favorite Geo Daddy, Zhang Li. Hu Tao has an overall goofy personality with a taste of innocence that's completely adorable. Seeing her trying to get clients is also quite amusing. I pretty much love Hu Tao for all three aspects, lore, design, and meta. I've been told that my Hu Tao is actually very good, but being a meta noob, you tell me. I also have C3 Hu Tao, which means I can spam her charge attacks to get to places faster when stamina runs out. The Hu Tao mobile works very well. But yeah, I love Hu Tao. She's very hilarious. Out of all the characters I have loved, anime and anything close to that subject, lollies have always been characters I've never really been a fan of. Even with the cast of lollies in Genshin, it's not that I dislike any of the lollies for their personality. I just don't like lollies in general. I don't know, just little kid characters never really meshed well with me. I can't really explain it. I will say though, Sayu is adorable and Chi Chi is a comedic gag within herself. But still, neither of these characters make me scream in excitement. Diona as well also fits in that category. However, there is one lolly character that has really grown on me. In fact, in the very beginning when I first pulled her, to be honest, I wasn't exactly thrilled despite her being my first 5 star I pulled. The first 5 star I ever pulled was on the Klee banner in October of 2020. I thought to myself, a lolly, that's perfect. But then I completed her story quest and proceeded to learn more about her. She's an adorable little troublemaker that doesn't know any better and is literally a nuclear threat to Tevat. I mean, she kind of blew up a mountain and has an insane reputation for being one of Mondstadt's most powerful contenders. According to Alice, her mother, their race lives for longer times. So in reality, we have no idea how old Klee really is, but she still has the mentality of a little girl. 
With that, she still has a bunch of untapped potential. But with the quests we are given, we see just how innocent, naive, and adorable Klee is. She gives off this protect-at-all-costs vibe, and that's how I feel. She doesn't need the protection though, let's be real. But I just find it super adorable that she gets put in time out, and Jean is the ultimate babysitter. No fish blasting now, Klee. Her latest appearance in Inazuma with Yoimiya was also so adorable and wholesome. I legit get excited when Klee makes an appearance, because she's so unpredictable and fun. She's just so adorable, and brings me so much joy, because of the love she has for her Mondstadt family. And of course, Miss Honorary Knight. I play as Lamine, so... Everyone in Mondstadt plays a part in raising Klee, and seeing everyone just unite to protect and watch over her, to me, is just so damn wholesome. She considers everyone a part of her family, and she mainly only has positive things to say about everyone. Klee lights up a room and can make almost anyone smile, especially someone like me who doesn't like lollies. Honestly, Klee is such a special character to me, not only due to her personality and wholesomeness, but also because she was my first 5 star. And due to that, my bias may be a bit personal, but this is a favorite character's list after all. Regardless though, if you hurt Klee, you're on my shit list. Before starting number 1, here are some honorable mentions. Firstly, we have the Sumero cast of Sino and Kole. Both of these characters seem really interesting, seeing as they both decided to venture together after their respective story arcs in the manga. Sino has some very interesting sorcerer powers, and Kole's whole life being impacted after meeting Amber was really wholesome. I want to know more about both of these characters and how they are going to play a role in Sumeru. Next is Ganyu. Bottom line, I appreciate the hard work she puts in for the Chising. She also has some lore that we don't know a lot about yet, especially when it comes to her parents. However, the Adepti do treat her like a daughter. I want to learn more about Ganyu's parents though and the relationship they have with the other Adepti. Also, Ganyu's adorable. But okay then, enough of these honorable mentions. Who could possibly be number one? And finally, at number one, you guys should know this one is pretty obvious. I have a poster of her, I have a keychain of her on my lanyard, she's my phone background, and of course, she's my icon on Discord. Why do I have all these, you must be asking? Well, for one, I'm a weeb, so she's waifu material. I mean, come on. Best element, best design, and best color? You can't beat that. Dumb waifu stuff aside though, Raiden A and Makoto are my favorite characters in this game. I just admire both of them as strong leaders, and of course the adorable side of Raiden A. She loves light novels, Dongo Milk, and we really see her change as a character from her time starting on Inazuma to now. We thought her puppet was her, but as it turns out, her consciousness was in her plane of Euthymia, where she just chilled for the last 500 years. Sure, I always liked her design, but really taking a look at her personality made me like her even more. Her backstory, though, is also pretty tragic. Having the entirety of her friends killed, not to mention her sister as well. The impact that had on her is shown, and it really shows how hurt she was due to these events taking place. But once the Traveler defeats her in combat is when we really start to see just how great she is. The relationship between her and Yai Miko really shows this, as Miko jokes with her. It shows A has a sense of humor, and still has a heart despite what happened. She wants to step up as the true leader of Inazuma, and she deems her nation to be a prosperous one. We even see her and Makoto interact one more time, and we find out about what she did prior to her death. That's an entire video in itself though, so I will go over that at a later time. Bottom line, I like Raiden's design and the character development she has had thus far, despite the circumstances that have been dealt to her. Well, those are my top 10 favorite characters in Genshin Impact. I love all these characters greatly and the traits they possess. Who are your favorite Genshin characters though and why? Let me know in the comments below. Anywho though, thank you again for 20k subscribers. I appreciate you guys enjoying and watching the content, so I wanted to give a huge thank you once again for supporting this channel. Here's to more success in the future as the months go by. With that thought, I'm going to go ahead and close the Tevachinary. Thanks so much for watching, and I will see you in the future for more Genshin Impact content and lore.